Hi everyone. Today we are going to see a selection sort, another sort in algorithm that we will compare with insertion sort. So let's start with an um, instance A uh, composed of five, uh, six numbers, five, two, four, six, one, three. These same numbers we used for insertion sort. And you see that we have in orange um, the index. Uh, from one to six. So selection sort works in this way. Basically, we start from a J set to one, the beginning, so in this case it's five, and then we compare J, let's say we compare A of J, which is five, with all the other numbers in the sequence. And what we do is to check if we find a, a, a smaller number than, than the current one. So uh, five is compared to two. Is two smaller than five? Yes. So basically two, so uh, let's change color, red. Two is the new minimum number. Then we go on and we uh, check if four, if four is smaller than two, no, six, no, one, yes. So one is the new minimum number. Okay, then we check three, is three smaller than one? No, so we get one. At this point, what we do is a swap. What we swap is the original A of J, five, with the minimum, with a min, which is the minimum that we just found, which is one. So we swap these two numbers. Okay, so the situation now is the one we uh, depicted here, because we swapped one with five, and now one is in position j equals to one. Now, j is moved to two, to index two, which is number two, then we compare two with four, six, five, three. None of these numbers are uh, smaller than two, so basically we don't do anything because two is already in the right place. Also in this case, you see that we never consider the numbers on the left of the current index, okay? Because we assume that on the left, everything is altered. Then we move j to 3, like here, so now we have the a of j is the number 4, so we compare 4 to 6, is 6 more than 4? No. Is 5 smaller than 4? No. Is 3 more, smaller than 4? Yes. So this is the new a min, and so we have to exchange these two numbers. So we need to swap three with four. Now you, you can see the new situation where three is here. So we increment J another time. So now we need to consider six and four is the smallest number afterwards. So we exchange basically uh, four with six. And so we would put four here and six here. Then we move on to five. Five is not smaller than six, so that's fine. Then we move to six, and everything is okay. So we end up with a sorted sequence of numbers. So let's see the pseudocode of selection sort. So as we as before, we we, we define the name of our algorithm, which is selection sort. The input, which is a, we should also define. Uh, what is the input, so we should write something like uh, input uh, a sequence of integers. That's it. So we specify the input. We should also specify the output, writing output, column, uh, a sequence of sorted integers. Uh, the first instruction of the algorithm is 
we assign to n the length of the sequence. Then we get into a for loop starting from the first element of the sequence with index one. Remember that in Python the index would be zero to n minus one. So basically we get till the uh, last minus one element of the sequence. Okay. Why? Because what we do is to check for the minimum element. So to check for the minimum element, we fix one index, and then we, we check the element at that index if it is bigger, greater than any other element in the sequence, but we look just on the right of the selected element. So when we reach um, the element before the last one, we just have to check one element, the last one. So the element we selected plus the next one on the right. When we get to the last element, we don't do anything because we know that by definition, on the left, everything is sorted and on the right, you don't have anything. So you don't need to get to the last element. You, you just need to stop to the element before the last. Then we assign the current j to a variable called smallest. Okay, because when we start our process, the element we have in our hands is the smallest one, right? If we go here to the example, you see that, for instance, here we start for index two, the element we have here is the smallest one right now. Then we need to compare it to the others. In this case, it is really the smallest one. Okay, so then we get another for loop, starting from the elements, the element on the right of the one we selected here. So from j plus one, till the end this time, till n, because we, we get to, come to check all the elements on the right of the selected one. So from j plus one to n. What we do here is that we have a conditional, so an if condition, if the current element is smaller than what we thought was the smallest, so the current element here, then the new smallest element is the one with index i. Okay, so we update not the element, but the index. We go on and we compare all the elements on the right. Keep checking if the current element is smaller or not with respect to what we thought was the smallest. If it is smaller, we update the smallest. Otherwise, we just skip this and we go back to this for loop. When we uh, checked all the elements to the right, so we reached i equals to n, we go out the for loop and basically we swap the elements. We swap the element we started from, so uh, for instance, j equals to one, with what is the smallest. Careful that if j equals to one is the smallest, we never update this variable. And so this exchange basically is just swap the element with itself. You do that, but basically nothing happens. Now let's see how much each operation costs, okay? So that we can uh, compare the running time of selection sort to the running time of insertion sort. So we have that uh, constant uh, cost for each operation, C1, C2, C3, and so on and so forth, as we did for selection sort, okay? then we know that we can uh, assign cost one to each one of these operations. Point is, how many times are we doing these operations? Well, the first operation is an assignment of a variable. We calculate the length of A, and then we assign the length of A to the variable N. So these are two operations, but they are basic operations, so we don't care and we consider them as one. And we repeat this operation only one time. Right. We do this assignment once and that's it. Then we, we have the check of this condition of the for loop. How many times do we check this condition? Well, we go from one 
to n minus 1, so n minus 1 times, plus we check the condition one last time to see if we are over n minus 1. So we do this operation n times. Then we have the operation smallest. This assignment is done every time we get into the for loop, right? So basically we do this n minus one time because we go from one to n minus one. Then we have another for loop. How many times do we do this for loop? Well, it depends on j. Okay, so we do this for j going from one to n, right, minus one because we get into this for loop uh, just n minus one times for a given t sub j that depends on the instance as we, we have seen before for insertion sorting. So just to recap, we know that this t sub j is the number of times the condition in the for loop is checked or the variable i is updated for this particular given j. So how many times do we check this for j equal to 1? 1. How many times do we check this for j which is 2? 2. So basically t sub j will be j as we would see, right? Then how many times are we going to do the operation C5? So the assign the check that if A of J is smaller than A of smallest, well, we do this the same amount of times, oh, okay, that uh, uh, we did the, the, the for loop. So from J to N equals to one to N minus one, because we get into here, n plus 1 times and but the number of times does not depend only on j is t sub j minus 1 because we get into this uh, instruction to do this the, exactly the same amount of times we check the for loop minus 1 because we do not have the last check to see if we are above n, okay? So remember that every time you count the number of times you do an operation for a, for a loop it is always one more time than the number of times you do the operations inside the small loop, the, 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 the loop, okay? Now, how many times do we do the next operation? So smallest equal to one, two to i, well, it has a cost c sub six, of course, and we do this operation as many times as we do the if condition checking. So we do this, the sum going from j to one to n minus one, t sub j minus one. The last operation is outside this for loop, you see, is outside, so we do this operation, the exchange, as many times as we get into the main for loop, so n minus one. Okay, so now we uh, know how many times we repeat each single operation of the selection sort algorithm. Now, to uh, check the running time, to get the running time of selection sort, we have to decide what's the instance we are going to consider. So best case and worst case, right? Well, we remember that for insertion sort, the difference between uh, the best case and the worst case was sizable. Best case was linear, worst case was quadratic running time. For selection sort, there is no such a difference because the best uh, input would be the ordered sequence, right? And the worst input would be an inverse ordered sequence. 
But for selection sort, let's go back to the, to the example here. What we see is that we do not care about the actual element we are comparing because we start from the first one and we compare the first one with all the next elements. If we find the minimum, we do a swap, right? Then check this. Two is already ordered. One, two, it's already ordered, but we never check this, right? We select two and then we check if all the other elements are smaller than two. We already know that they are not smaller because we check them here, but we have no memory about that. Well, the algorithm has no memory about that. So for every J, we keep checking all the elements till the last one. If they are ordered, we do that. If they are not ordered, we do that. So there is no difference based on the instance of the algorithm. So the running time for the best case and the worst case and the average case for what is worth is exactly the same. So we just consider one instance and that's it. So P of n, the running time of the algorithm is, as we have seen before, C sub 1 times 1, C sub 2 times n, C sub 3 times n minus 1, C 4 times the sum from uh, j going from uh, 1 to n minus 1, t with j, c, and so on and so forth. Okay, now, what's our t, t sub j in this case? Well, it depends on j, so we can assume that t with j is equal to j. If we do this, we get what follows. And what follows is uh, this equation so t of n is 1 plus n see that our assumption is also that c sub 1 is equal to c sub 2 blah 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 is equal, equal to c sub 7 which is everything 1 which everything is 1 so 1 plus n plus n minus 1 plus this sum is as we have seen before the series goes to n times n minus 1 over 2 plus two times C5 plus C6, one plus one, two, the same minus one. Okay, this is a constant, plus N minus one. What we see easily is that the final T of N has a quadratic form since here, and here we have n squared, okay? Now we have some constants, but what's important is that we have an a n plus b n squared plus b n plus c four. So we have quadratic running time. The main difference with insertion sort is that for selection sort, we have a quadratic running time no matter what instance we are considering. So if we have the best possible instance, we are still requiring quadratic running time. So even though for the worst case they have the same running time, insertion sort is to be preferred in a setting where we do not know which kind of sequences we are going to receive. Okay, in this video, we just discussed selection sort, one example, the pseudocode and the analysis of the running time compared to insertion sort. Thank you for listening. See you to the next video.